this is Sarah Sugar. Welcome to my four-part series of making Disney princesses into prom dresses. So first today we are starting with Mulan. So for Mulan, I decided to combine two aspects of two of her dresses. Firstly, I took the long flowing dress that she wears in the beginning with the matchmaker look. So I created kind of the layered look there with the long um, sort of bell shape at the end. And I combined it with the color scheme from her warrior outfit at the end at the award ceremony. So I thought this would be kind of poetic because I'm assuming that this prom all these Disney princesses would be going to would be happening after the ending of their movie. And so I was able to create a dress that both kind of symbolized the elegance of her culture while also the warrior that she has inside of her. In doing this, I was able to create kind of a sunrise or sunset look with the blending of dark shades to light shades on each respective piece of the dress, which I think looks very elegant. Um, definitely kind of unique for prom. Uh, I went to prom recently and there's definitely a very trendy style of prom dresses right now. There is a lot of variation, but um, I do think that this would be kind of a, a very bright and bold and refreshing look to wear at a dance. My next princess is Kida from Atlantis The Lost Empire. Um, not only is this not a super well-known movie, but it's also not a super well-known princess or not a widely considered princess, um, despite the fact that she is a warrior princess in the movie. She's just not really grouped in with the rest of the princesses, but I'm trying to include everybody who might be slightly related to royalty in this series, so I will be including Kida. We are gonna switch speaking topics for a little bit here. And I figured I would share some very interesting information that I have found online about the different eras or groups of Disney movies as a whole. So these princesses I am including in these videos, I sorted chronologically based on release date. So um, in researching when each movie came out, I found some very interesting facts that I would like to share with you. So the oldest grouping of Disney movies was known as the Golden Age. This was the very beginning. This is when um, like Snow White and Dumbo were made. Um, Walt Disney was very much a factor in these movies. It was a very small group of people working on these movies. Nothing like the Disney we know now. Disney was also really, really struggling financially. Um, except for Dumbo and Snow White, both of those movies made a profit, but most of these other movies were failing pretty badly, even though they might be well known and kind of loved from us, you know, like movies like Pinocchio. The thing I find most interesting about this is how these movies were considered wholesome and upbeat, but they all contained a sort of darker side. This era was sometimes nicknamed the sugar and tar era because it would have really gorgeous scenes, but also really scary scenes. So think kind of like the dark scenes in Pinocchio with the scary fairgrounds or like the really killer woods that like Snow White gets trapped in. These movies were kids movies, but they had really scary scenes and you know, even me today, I can remember watching these movies as a kid and being kind of unsettled by some of these scenes. They were low-key scary, especially for children. But these movies did kind of become um, a template for what Disney movies are like now. For example, animal sidekicks became a thing. Um, animals that could kind of think for themselves like um, Dumbo and Bambi. Um, music in the backgrounds of the movies became really popular and the retelling of classic tales was also a very big factor in this time period. I'm gonna take a quick moment to talk about who I'm drawing right now. This is Tiana from Princess and the Frog. I gave her a very big green um, poofy dress similar to her like wedding gown type thing when she gets married in the woods at the end um, or the bayou, I, I guess that's probably where she actually gets married. But anyways, um, also very fun poofy dress. I love poofy dresses. I just love the dramatic, nice dresses. So this one was also very fun to make. So the next era is pretty forgettable. It's the wartime era. This was during World War II, so everyone was struggling financially. And so Disney made a lot of lower budget films, like films that weren't really movies. They just like several shorts put together. Like the most notable films from that time were like The Three Caballeros and Ichabod and Mr. Toad, you know, not like blockbuster Disney films. They were just trying to get by and not go out of business. The next era was called the Silver Age. So we have the Gold Age, the 
the Silver Age, and eventually later, the Bronze Age, but I'll get to that. Right now, the Silver Age. So this was movies like Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. They were returned to the big budget full length movies. It was also kind of known the Restoration Age as Disney and their films kind of became good again. They started earning money again. Their animation was beautiful again. Think of those like gorgeous scenes like in Sleeping Beauty when they show the castle or other scenes like that where it's these beautiful hand-drawn paintings. Um, a lot of gorgeous art like that that really um, made their movies very pretty. Definitely less scary than the gold age. Next was clearly the Bronze Age. So a movie that happened in this era was Robin Hood. I included um, a character from that in the first part of this series. Um, Disney really struggled after the death of Walt Disney. Um, they did less fairy tales. A lot of their movies just honestly weren't as good. And so this was also a time of hardship for Disney. It is crazy thinking about with how big Disney is now with all of its influence and its, um, you know, intertwinement into pop culture, um, how it struggled a lot like many companies starting in the beginning. Another quick break here to talk about the character I'm doing right now. Um, this is Rapunzel. You can see I was contemplating whether or not to include her short hair. I ended up including her long hair just because I feel like it's the more classic Rapunzel look. But anyways, I really like the dress I did for this. Um, it is very fairy core vibes corset with little flowers on it and stuff. I feel like it really gets her character. Um, color scheme her dress is similar to kind of the dress that she wears in the movie and also i feel like she has very much a flower vibe because of all the bright pastel colors in that movie and like oh the scene where she's on the boat and she's plucking all of the flowers out of her hair and placing it on the water very very pretty if it wasn't obvious enough i am a disney fan so yeah i love all of these movies so much and um hopefully you guys do too hopefully you're enjoying this as much as i did making it so back into my spiel on all of this information that you didn't need to know, but you are knowing now. <laughs> so this era, I would say, is pretty actually commonly well known. Many people actually know what it is. It is the Disney Renaissance era. So all movies during this um, time period were considered box office successes. Um, they were definitely becoming very popular. Again, Disney became a very well-known brand again, and the music became very popular as well. So this um, would be a lot of the um, characters I included in the last video. Um, movies like Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, Pocahontas, and Mulan. I know that like personally in my family, this is when my parents really fell in love with Disney with like Aladdin and Little Mermaid. A lot of people really came to love Disney during this time period. The next era is known as the post-Renaissance era. The movies during this time period didn't do quite as good. Um, they were the first attempts at CGI. One of the movies during this era was Atlantis, as referenced earlier in this video, which might be why you don't know it, because the movies made in this era weren't as well known. The final era is known as the revival. Some people might call it the second Disney Renaissance. It is the time period we are living in now. So these are the movies that are made with CGI. Um, Princess and the Frog is probably considered in this revival era, although that was the last fully animated film did made by Disney. But when you think of all of the common day um, Disney princess movies with that common art style that they use now, that is the revival period. An example of a movie from this time period would be Brave. So this is Merida from Brave. I gave her a cute little slip dress. I am a super big sucker for slip dresses and I also like dark colored slip dresses. So that was perfect for her design. Also, it's less glitzy and glammy than a lot of prom dresses can be um, because she is definitely somebody who does not like wearing a dress or she's just like, I mean, if you remember the movie, she like rips it so it's comfortable for her. And this dress does fit very loosely and comfortably. So I think she would like it. I love drawing her hair too. I I love drawing a lot of things. I'm realizing that from doing this voiceover, but I really like drawing curly hair. So I got to do that with this character. So I always include a lot of information in the video description. Um, so if you want to check that out, I have like information on what equipment I used. I have the links to all of the songs that I used in case you want to um, listen to those. And in today's description, I have the link to the article that I have learned and recited a bunch of information on all of these Disney time periods. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I would definitely go check that out. It has very beautiful pictures and it's a very well-written article. So if you want to learn more, definitely go check that out. 
I also have the link to my Instagram, shameless plug. I always have to shame it, shame it. Sorry, I always have to plug it um, because I definitely like sharing my art. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll be back again for part four. Have a great day.